stick just changed around here, buddy. You're looking at it. What do you smell? Peanut shells. Old hot dogs. Spilled beer. Like you say, the most important thing is that they try their hardest and they have fun. No. No. The most important thing is that they win. Every one of those kids should have a chance to play. Look at the adjective. Play. We ain't here to play. Is to tell these people to shut up if you want to hear what I got to say. You guys heard it. You heard that sound of us eating some crow there at the beginning. Clint Schweitzer, Noah Groniger, welcome to the Outsiders Podcast. On a victory Monday, our first one of the season. Kansas City Chiefs going to New Orleans and get a huge road win. Noah, how in the world did this happen? This season we thought was over. Well, we can thank the replacement refs. We can thank our defense for showing up. We can thank Alan Bailey and Justin Houston for getting a push, getting pressure, getting sacks. Uh, we can't thank Matt Castle, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, the running game was huge. The defense, the coaching was great. Um, I just liked everything I saw other than number seven. Well, you know, there's obviously something wrong in New Orleans. I'm not trying to diminish the Chiefs' win, but at home against an 0-2 Chiefs team that had been reeling and doing nothing, basically, to be competitive in a ball game, the Chiefs go in there and beat them. Did they take the Kansas City Chiefs lightly? Is there something really wrong down there in New Orleans? I think something's going to be wrong all year until Sean Payton gets back from his year suspension. I mean, you got Mickey Loomis, the general manager, who's out eight weeks. Joe Vitt is out six weeks. Um, Jonathan Vilma's on the pup list, so he's out six weeks. I mean, there's just something really wrong there. They need that coach. They need that offensive play caller. And you saw them uh, take two timeouts back-to-back, uh, -back, and you can't do that. That was a penalty. Sean Payton obviously wouldn't have done that. And uh, those replacement refs, I think, got that Pierre Thomas call wrong. It looked like he caught the ball, walked right into the end zone, and uh, that really would have put the game out of reach. Luckily, they overturned it. The Saints missed a field goal, and we have life. Oh, and then, you know, this game still in the third quarter was 24-6, and uh, the Chiefs basically had moved the ball on New Orleans but really failed to put up anything but a couple field goals, and I think that, that, that Matt Castle was a detriment in this game. He was overthrowing people badly. Even ones he completed were people getting killed, basically. You saw him a cluster uh, have that horrible you know, elbow hyperextension on a play he had to come back for. I hate, you hate to pile on you know, a player you know, after a big win like this, but Matt Castle, I really think the Chiefs won despite him. Oh, they definitely won in spite of Matt Castle. I mean, he was sailing balls all over the place. Uh, could have had a touchdown there to Baldwin if he puts it out in front instead of trying to throw it eight feet in the air. Uh, Baldwin almost comes down with an am amazing catch, but uh, couldn't quite do it. Um, threw a pass to Bo where he got his legs taken out. Threw it behind Hillis uh, that seemed to injure Hillis. He'll he never came back in. Out in front of McCluster where he's got a you like kind of fall to the ground to catch it and uses his hand to brace the fall and hyper extends his left elbow I mean he was just wild erratic all day in the interception he was just staring that down the whole way you could see it coming and it was awful well yes and more positive note I mean Jamal Charles comes and has another one of his those Jamal Charles games that we've wanted to see we've want you know when wondering if Jamal Charles has that burst and uh, on that 91 touch on that 91 yard touchdown we, we sure saw the burst he beats the defense uh, to the to the edge and then outruns everybody and it's good to see that Oh, definitely. I mean, that gave us some life there. I mean, that just pumped energy back into this team. You could see it. And 230-plus yards, 50-plus receiving yards. I mean, he's the only other person besides Jim Brown to have those kind of numbers. Those two stand alone, and Jamal Charles, the running game, everyone in that running game was fantastic. Well, yeah, and let's talk about that because the Chiefs were banged up on the offensive line. You had... You know, Rodney Hudson get injured in the in the game, and then you had Ryan Lilgen move over there. You had you know Jeff Allen come in, and you how were they able to to, to even to protect it all? Because I, I thought that uh, you know is it New Orleans defense just that bad? They just couldn't quite they they didn't really 
present much of a pass rush all game, but our, our patchwork offensive line, yeah, patchwork together just fine. I probably would say it's more of the Saints defense being god awful. Um, without Greg Williams, without those uh, defenses and those schemes that Greg Williams has, I mean, he likes to mix it up. He likes to bring a lot of pressure. Um, he's more of a man guy, man coverage, and Spagnola's kind of a sit back in zone. So I think we were able to take advantage of that. Well, I think some, you know, looking at this game, the, the Chiefs had the ball. Uh, down three at the end of the game. What did you think of the call to the, you know Romeo Cornell between him and Dayball? I guess they choose to go ahead and uh, play for the field goal there when we had a minute and some timeouts to try to win the football game. What was that? I definitely wanted them to go and try and score, but uh, the more I think about it, the more I agree with them. Uh, you cannot let Matt Castle throw that ball down there. I mean, you've got the easy three. You're definitely in suck up field goal range he's already made a bunch I think he had made four at that time and uh, you just cannot let Castle throw that ball have it sail high tipped off a receiver's hands or something or and get it picked off and that's game over I mean you got to take your three go to overtime and maybe something will happen good and we won't have to depend on Matt Castle and that's what happened well we got into overtime of course and uh, you know I thought I thought Dwayne Bow had a really good game and he really on some big on, on some third downs and stuff kept drives going when it looked like that there was no way that was going to happen. Castle did make a couple of good throws to Dwayne Bow to, to keep drives going, but obviously it was Jamal Charles that carried the day. Uh, what does this mean? The Chiefs are now one and two. We've seen what the rest of the AFC West has done. Uh, everybody losing except uh, you know us and the Raiders. Denver and San Diego look very beatable right now. What's going on in this division? Oh, I was definitely happy for the Chiefs' win over the Saints. I mean, I was screaming at the top of my lungs. I mean, definitely needed this win, but um, I don't think people can get too excited. I mean, yes, we have San Diego. I think that's going to be a tough game. I say it's 50-50 toss-up right now. People think because the Falcons uh, killed the Chargers that we can, we can too, but that's uh, not how I see it. I think it's going to be a toss-up. And uh, Denver looks still to be the cream of the crop to me. I mean, they played the Steelers, the Falcons, and the Texans. They beat the Steelers, had two close losses to the Falcons and Texans. They look to be still the cream of the crop. Not by much, but still, I see them winning this division. And uh, even if we do beat the Chargers, we're going to come back to, to earth with the Ravens after that. And Ooh. that looks, whew, that's just going to be a brutal game for our Chiefs. Well, here's a problem with the Baltimore Ravens. You, the, Chief, the Chiefs went to New Orleans where they're facing a, an all-world offense and uh, not much on defense. The Baltimore Ravens, we saw last night uh, at home against New England, Flacco can flat out put the ball in the air. Torrey Smith, Anquan Bolden, uh, that you know, they're, they're new, new tight end. What are the Chiefs going to do? And that's, that's a week down the road. We probably don't even need to look at that. But my goodness, the Ravens look very good. I'm scared of that game. I mean, I know it's a week down the road. We should be really focusing on the Chargers. But, I mean, you look at last uh, Sunday's game yesterday. I mean, Matt Castle sailing those balls. I mean, the Saints aren't really good. They're not really in position so defensively. So uh, people weren't really getting lit up as much as I think we're going to see in that oh, Ravens God. game. With passes sailing high, Ed Reed, Ray Lewis, they are just going to be lighting people up all day if that continues. Well, here's hoping to, to, to come back home and get a, a big win against the San Diego Chargers next week. That will put us in first place. That would get it. Absolutely. I, I think it's possible. I, I agree with you on it being a 50-50 game. I think, uh, I don't know, I, I, I think it depends on some injury situations. You get maybe, you know, I don't know what the status of, uh, of Hudson is right now and, and you know, McCluster's. Really banged up that sh that elbow. I don't know how fast to something like that heals. It looked pretty well, we, we drafted Devin Wiley for a reason. It's time to step up. Well, absolutely. We're gonna we're gonna see, man. I tell you what, uh, you cannot diminish this victory. Chiefs go on the road, win it, twenty seven twenty four. No, we're gonna we're gonna come back at you. You know, next week talking Chiefs Chargers. Guys, give us your thoughts. We want to know what you guys think about uh, the win and where the Chiefs are headed. Are they uh, are they trending up, or is this uh, maybe win just an apparition? I think they're headed for first place. I think they can beat Chargers. I know I said it's 50-50, but I'm feeling good about the game going into it. I think we can get first place, and then uh, that Ravens game is uh, – yeah, we'll get to that another time. Maybe we just skip next week because that Baltimore game already scares me. I'm having nightmares about Ray Lewis uh, uh, already. So, all right, guys, thank you so much for joining us on the Outsiders Podcast. Be sure to keep coming back to the page, liking it, give us, uh, giving us your thoughts, and uh, sharing some of our stuff with uh, all your Chiefs fan friends. For Noah Groniger, Clint Schweitzer, Outsiders Podcast, thanks for joining us. Chiefs!